much, Brian, and uh, actually thank you uh, to, and to your whole family. Uh, I want to <laughs> say the same as my uh, as Tim and and others. It is such a great pleasure every time I come here, and it's so nice to meet people and that you offer us this chance. Thank you really very, very much uh, for that. I guess Ernst Schneider, he died in 1977. He would have loved to be here, but of course he, was, he died too early, otherwise he would have come for sure. Um, before I start to talk about my main subject, let me say some words about Alfred Ziffer. As you know, he was a good friend of mine. He died in, um, almost two years ago, not only because his partner, Michael Andresen, has given a donation for this uh, symposium, especially because Alfred really loved to be here. And he also introduced me here. And um, it was the best uh, period in the year for him, the London, be coming here to London. So that's the reason why Michael decided to give um, uh, to donate some money for it. And um, uh, Alfred also has lectured here several times, last time in 2015, about uh, Meisen porcelain in Ansbach. And many of us will have uh, some memories uh, of him here with Nette and Sebastian, and also <laughs> Lydia Ljakova, who she, she will of St. Petersburg, she will speak next tomorrow. Uh, we have others. <laughs> Uh, he was an important person in German uh, porcelain world uh, because he was not only the vice president of the Karamos, the, the society of the German friends, uh, ceramic friends, but also the editor of the journal. And, um, but he is known especially as expert, the best expert of Nymphenburg porcelain uh, after he has published in 1997 the catalog of the Bäumel collection, which is always cited in the auction catalogs. And, but he has worked also uh, very much about modern Nymphenburg porcelain. And I had the wonderful chance to work together with him on Bustelli. Uh, on our uh, exhibition. But he was also a great collector, a very knowledgeable collector of uh, Nymphenburg porcelain, old ones, but, uh, but pieces, but also new uh, of the 20th century. And he always had the very first uh, item with this uh, special decoration. And after his death, his partner did a um, encouraged decision rather soon to uh, give the whole collection to an auction at Neumeister in Munich. And he did it also because he wanted to have a catalog of the whole collection. And otherwise, it would have been difficult to create that with one. And it came out with wonderful photos. And it was a very successful um, auction. And before that, well, uh, from, from the result of the auction, um, Michael gave 50,000 euros to our museum to buy other pieces. And before he gave these eight pieces of, post, of Nymphenburg porcelain to our museum. And they are now installed, fitting uh, perfectly, as you can see. Uh, oops. Here, there is this pedestal underneath a clock we had already before. So it really fits perfectly. Um, and Michael also bought one uh, piece afterwards, uh, uh, which uh, uh, Alfred had, for us, uh, had published in his first catalog. It's a Kaumheimer collection, a collection of a Jewish collector who had to um, escape um, uh, and, uh, uh, to America. And his uh, collection was left in Italy. And for uh, uh, several well, uh, decades, it was exposed in Dresden, you know, in, in Trento, northern Italy. And then it came, it was restituted and came to the market again. Well, now back uh, to Ernst Schneider, and you will see they have connections, uh, uh, um, Alfred Ziffer and Ernst Schneider, especially because Ernst Schneider was also the, he was the um, co-founder of the Keramos, the Society of German uh, Ceramic Friends, 
and uh, as Alfred was then the vice president. And also, Michael gave um, the um, scientific uh, papers of Alfred also to the Bavarian National Museum. Now we have it uh, installed in Lustheim because there is space and in our museum not. So we can, whenever somebody is interested, show it and somebody can work there. Well, Ernst Schneider, um, he is a great, great uh, collector, and you all know where his collection is, in uh, Lustheim Castle, outside of Munich, 20 kilometers, and it's a little castle, the um, uh, eye-catcher of the main castle, the Baroque uh, uh, Schle uh, Schleisheim Castle. And uh, it's inside this huge hall, and on both sides uh, are always five rooms as the apartment of the elector and of the electress. Um, and the ceiling is still original. Uh, of this, uh, it was not destroyed to, during any war. And um, this was the castle where then the collection was installed in 1971. And you see huge vitrines like this, but also smaller ones. And it's exposed in the uh, main floor, but also there is starting with uh, Bus no, Böttger and early Böttger stoneware, Böttger porcelain, and going then um, until the seventh, uh, the porcelains of the period of the seventh, uh, seven years war. And also exposed downstairs in the cellar that was uh, in former times the kitchen uh, of the, this little hunt, hunting castle. And there uh, are uh, other very important uh, commissions of the um, rulers of Saxony. And um, we will see other pieces afterwards. It's a collection of more than 2,000 pieces, actually uh, the most comprehensive collection. And, um, and uh, after Dresden, it's the second biggest and the second um, ranking uh, Meissen collection at all. Ernst Schneider, born in 1900, was uh, after the Second World War really one of the leading personalities in the young German Republic. Uh, in the time of the wonder of economy in Germany. Uh, he was born as the son of a farmer, and only his teachers saw that he was so um, uh, intelligent and supported him so he could study. And uh, at the age of 25, he became a you know, um, young junior, no, junior partner in, in industry. And his senior partner was Jewish. So after a few years in the 30s, he had to escape uh, and leave Germany. And he continued the holding it's, um, uh, several industry branches all together. It's chemistry. It's also. Um, iron and, and steel and so on. Uh, perhaps the name Odol, the water, if, uh, rinse, where you can rinse the, uh, your mouth, this is also part of um, this uh, company. And after the Second World War, he gave the part of his uh, senior partner back to him then. Uh, he himself, he moved from Saxony to Düsseldorf, to Western uh, Germany, and continued there and had took over many um, uh, volunteer posts, uh, was president of the Chamber of Commerce and so on. And he, had, he was never a member of a party, but uh, had much, much influence. He had, of course, contact with all ministers of the Republic. And he had a, a round table, an informal round table, where he invited politicians, uh, economic people, and also cultural people to discuss and find good solutions together. And it was said he was speaking uh, not with a loud voice, with a low voice, but people were listening to what he said. And it's also said uh, that he um, uh, said in uh, several occasions, uh, without collecting, I wouldn't have been successful in my work either. And he uh, took his uh, energy by uh, handling his porcelain and um, watching it, and he enjoyed that uh, so much. Uh, this is how he had the round tables, the, uh, the meeting where you could uh, discuss uh, very informally. It was, this happened in the 50s or 60s, 
And this happened in Düsseldorf in that wonderful uh, castle, Jägerhof, where uh, his collection was installed in the uh, upper um, uh, floor. And this, the meetings were in this uh, main uh, room. But actually, he wanted more. He, he would have loved to have the whole castle for himself. But there are also, also other museums in there. So he was sort of a little bit disappointed, though he had worked a lot uh, in Düsseldorf. And inside the main room, it's all along, there are still, it's still like this, um, uh, uh, vitrines where he had exposed his porcelain. And still now, there is a part of his collection left there, especially the house maler, the Meissen house maler, or Hausmaler on Meissen porcelain and other things, but the main part has gone to Munich, and I will tell you why. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I said already he was co founder of the uh, um, um, Society of Ceramic Friends because he loved also to talk with other people about, um, and that's why I say he would have loved to be here, he loved to talk with other people about um, his passion. And that's the reason why he didn't buy at auctions. He always bought with um, dealers, because he enjoyed very much talking, uh, the discussion. And But unfortunately, the documents about where he bought what, I, I, I only heard that. I, did, I don't have the documents. But for example, uh, recently, uh, um, Friedel Kirsch, who uh, owns the, the Lange Lo work, uh, shop, she told me that uh, this wonderful plaque of uh, Augustus III, he was bought by his, uh, with his, uh, her mother. Ernst Schneider, as he always liked to talk with other people, he got to know then also the young curator, uh, Rainer Rückert of the Bavaria National Museum, who made in 1966 the famous um, Meissen exhibition with more than 1,000 pieces. And in Germany, it really it, it started a run on, and there were suddenly many more collectors of Meissen porcelain, I was told, and uh, his uh, catalog still is, so it's old, old, but still uh, is uh, watched at. And like this, he had, well, on this catalog, on this exhibition, Schneider gave a third of the whole pieces. And therefore, he had the contact also with the politicians in Bavaria. And as he as I said, I said before, he wanted a castle for himself. So Bavaria was seeking and found then finally Lustheim Castle, and uh, as I showed you before. And it was built by, uh, this is a, a painting inside the castle. Um, this painting is here. And uh, it was built by uh, Max Emanuel, the elector of Bavaria, who was married uh, with his first wife, was a daughter of an emperor. So it's really high ranking. It was if the forthcoming wedding of the two were uh, the uh, young elector Max Emanuel, who had just won uh, against the Turkish uh, near Vienna. And that was the reason why he got the daughter of the emperor as, a, as his wife. So uh, it's really a high-ranking castle, um, and it was decided as it was empty and it was restored, of course, and Schneider moved in. And like this, um, it was uh, when they installed the whole collection, more than 2,000 pieces, I told you already. And like this, it became the first branch museum of the Bavarian National Museum, and that's why I am here to talk to you about it. Um, and Ernst Schneider, he also wanted to move there. The reason was also that in 1968, that means just in the year when he gave the whole donation, his uh, only son died in, with, with an accident. And so he was at the age of 68, he gave up all his jobs and, and, uh, and moved to Munich and moved in this uh, part of um, the uh, one wing, the upper uh, apartment. And this is from the other side to look at. And he had an elevator, so he could go downstairs and uh, show to the guests his collection, his whole collection. And he had the table in the main saal, so he also had dinners there. And on the table, you see already one of the most beautiful items. He, he has this uh, um, group of seven vases. 
And nowadays we have uh, emptied the Saal because we also have um, concerts there and only the f uh, huge animals. Schneider also had got um, three large white animals, the one uh, uh, modeled by Kirchner, where the face of the uh, tiger is uh, very human and is almost smiling, typical for, for um, kin uh, Kendler. Kin Kirchner, the earliest modeler, and then the others are uh, made by K uh, Kendler, who has much more realistic attitude towards these animals. And there is a fourth animal, it's this um, uh, monkey with a s large, also like this, with a um, snuff box. And it was, uh, in a certain time, um, uh, supposed to be wrong, uh, or, but, but it was tested and there's actually no doubt uh, that it is of, of the time, no, no doubt about it. One big part of the exit, uh, of the collection are mice and porcelains with decoration after East Asian patterns. And um, it was uh, Julia Weber who had uh, made a two-volume catalog of this part of the collection. And uh, actually, it was then also her PhD, and it is such a good and ex extraordinary book that uh, actually that was the reason why she became now director uh, of the most uh, of Dresden, the, the Zwinger collection. What Julia Weber has worked on are all these decorations after Asian uh, uh, um, patterns and it, which is exposed like this uh, in the tree. Not only the there are some extraordinary pieces in there like this vase with a low Lotus uh, um, flowers. Um, say it's, it comes from the Klemperer Klemper collection, and it was already long, long before uh, the, the auctions. Now, it uh, was um, uh, the restitution was climbed, and we had an uh, agreement with the family, so we could keep it and gave money for it. And it's, it's the same that uh, Malcolm has bought, <laughs> the ruin of the second one. Then there are pieces like this wonderful set, and also black, uh, blue and white uh, extraordinary pieces. And also, of course, many uh, with uh, Kakiamon decoration in the style that were sold by Le Maire in France as original pieces. And you see there also the inventory number of the Japanese palace. These are the pieces. And uh, she has also written in her catalog all the story about these wonderful vases. Oops, sorry. And no. And um, there were also some pieces like this, also Klemperer collection. And again, uh, we have uh, had an um, uh, agreement that we could keep uh, and pay for, for this uh, uh, special um, teapot because we couldn't buy new pieces for the collection. So we decided it's much better to keep those that we have and, um, and pay for those. Um, it's also a key piece um, and discussed with Julia. But there uh, was one other piece uh, of a whole collection of this butterfly uh, decoration. And with this, um, it's, it says it's Völkau. Uh, it's a castle um, in Eastern Germany um, of the family of the Fitztum family. And uh, there was a long discussion. We found out that it, it really, or they found out, and, and we found that there is this one piece where it, it, the inventory number is there. It was confiscated in 1945 after the war. And uh, they, of course, wanted uh, to, to gather at least some of the pieces. And, uh, but we have many of them, because it's a very um, uh, usual pattern for Meissen. And only one of them all was with the um, inventory marks of uh, Bölkau. And so we restituted that, and the rest not. Oops. <laughs> Yeah. I want to say that, uh, that uh, the publication of Julia Weber was not the only publication which has been done until now. R Rainer Rückert, he was supposed, of course, to write the uh, catalog, and the, it was supposed to be six volumes. But he is so sp 
specialized and so um, precise that he couldn't finish actually because he, because he has written this uh, book uh, about the biographies of all the collaborators of Meissen in the 18th century. You find many, 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 many informations in there. And moreover, there is this book, which is very nice with all well, with the masterpieces, uh, with wonderful photos, the smaller uh, volume. And then Julia Weber should, before she, it was decided that she goes to, to Dresden, she started uh, with a second uh, part of, of a catalogue about the early pieces, um, about Bedger stoneware and Bedger porcelain. And this part she has finished, but the, in the same volume, actually, are there are wonderful pieces like this huge uh, glass cooler or this um, uh, uh, polished uh, teapot as well and also here early Meissen porcelain with Funke decoration and it's the coat of arms of the daughter-in-law of uh, Chernhaus, the one who um, was also part of the inventors of Meissen porcelain. But he couldn't, she, she uh, Julia couldn't finish uh, uh, unfortunately the um, Augsburg decorated early Meissen porcelain and uh, it's now me to continue that work because we want to publish um, this volume where also the life of Schneider will be the very first part, part of it. And um, there are also many pieces, and as you can see, there are important pieces of the deco Augsburg decorated uh, um, objects here with the initials of Johann Aufenwert, for example, and others, uh, typical Augsburg decorated pieces with this very refined engraving in the uh, Schinoiserie scenes. And I like to continue that also because I have worked on Augsburg decoration already as in the Bavarian National Museum. This is our newly installed one room, the room uh, dedicated to the Emperor Charles VII who was the only emperor who was not Habsburg family. Only a very short time when Charles VI, the, the, the father of Maria Theresa, died without having a male heir, it was possible that one of the other electors who could have always been become emperor, he, he, then it was for a short time that the Bavarian ruler became emperor. Uh, as Charles VI only for three years, and then his son already gave up these ideas because it was not good for Bavaria. It was all occupied by, uh, by Austria. So the, wife, the husband of Maria Theresa, Franz uh, I, became the next emperor then. But why, why, why I tell this all is because he, all his life, was waiting until uh, the, his predecessor, the Habsburg Charles VI, would die, and it was clear he has no daughter, no, no male heir, and everything he did was with art, uh, with installing the residence in Munich, to show that he is worth to become the next emperor. And therefore, what you see here in the Saal, it's a huge Augsburg decorated gold service, you would say, but it's porcelain service. It's porcelain, as you can see, and the big uh, uh, plates are all Chinese porcelain, and here in front these are um, Meissen porcelain, decorated completely, uh, covered with gold, and you find these incredible ed uh, engravings in it on a high, high quality, the Chinese, uh, and you see after engravings of Riedinger, very precise and wonderfully done. And indeed, as Friedinger was relative somehow with the Seuter family, the, one of the two big families in, who, who did these gold works on porcelain. And so I'm sure that uh, Riedinger did that uh, engravings of all these wonderful plates. This uh, is extraordinary and doesn't exist anywhere else. So it was the future emperor who wanted a gold service, which was even better than gold because with the engraving and when you come closer, you realize it's porcelain and you can't melt it down. And the smaller parts have these uh, Chinese um, engravings, Chinese scenes engravings like Herold engravings. So this is also rather interesting. 
And moreover, there is one very special piece, uh, this uh, coffee pot with also uh, colored um, decorations after engraving of Hogart. One other big part in the Schneider collection is early Herold painting. One whole between with the very, uh, er, very, the very first years, uh, for example, these very early landscapes, you know Herold arrived, uh, Meissen was founded in 1710, and, but they couldn't make colors at the beginning, only after 1720. So 1722, it's just the second year that they were able to make colors, and that was, and Herold was a genius to, to invent the colors and also the decoration system, and he made these. Colors are here, and also at the first services were always that on the different items you uh, or tea of, of tea service you would uh, find a whole story be told, and here you have. Um, the gentleman writing a letter, and on the other side of the slope bowl, the lady, probably to whom she he addressed the letter, she is uh, walking around with uh, another gentleman in a red jacket already. And uh, here you see the man in the red jacket again, and the putto brings these horns, so that means he will be betrayed for sure. And indeed, uh, these pieces, the last one, and also this doesn't belong to the Lustheim collection, but it's nice to tell the whole story, that he, will, that Puto will bring him finally a baby. <laughs> Whose baby it is, uh, we don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that very, uh, another piece which I like very much is here, this water place in this landscape, and uh, there is the engraving that it is the water place of the, Cardinal Aldo Bradini in Frascati, where the people would walk around and then suddenly the water comes and you are all wet. But much bigger is the, all the uh, items with chinoiseries, with Chinese scenes on it. And of course, you know uh, that uh, Herold painted at the beginning on the porcelain and when the pieces were sold, they wouldn't, because they were his invention, uh, they uh, um, copied the inventions in this huge um, uh, book of uh, drawings so that in the next occasion they could reuse the invention of this uh, Chinese. Uh, this is the catalog of uh, Leipzig in, uh, published in 2010. And of course, it's nice to find the, the scenes which you find on the porcelain, like here. And it's a wonderful bowl here with a, a, a green and, and uh, on glaze blue. And also pieces like this, where I, we really think it's painted by Herold himself, very, very early pieces. But with others, it's more difficult. For example, this scene we have even twice in Lust time, and many otherwise, uh, uh, other uh, examples elsewhere. So this not. But there are some other pieces which are really extraordinary. Uh, there are four saucers like this, and it, this is a low the, from underneath. The, um, from inside, it's completely gold, and also underneath, it's gold, and only on the rim, it's these paintings. That means you would burst the uh, tea, or the, yes, actually the tea, in the saucer and drink it like this, and then the f person who is watching you will see the wonderful um, uh, uh, painting, which is rather rare. Um, and exactly the same order of these scenes, you will find this is the first of these four uh, saucers, and you find in the first row exactly these scenes, exactly in the same order. And for example, the, the lying lady here. And the same with the second uh, saucer, you find exactly the same scenes here in the second row. And the same is with the third saucer, you find it in the third row. And that is not uh, just, uh, that really proves for me that this is, these pieces were first painted the porcelain and then copied, and that means it done by Hörold himself. <laughs> also with this wonderful, very exceptional teapot, 
And uh, well, we were so proud always that we have the tea and uh, the um, uh, sugar box of the service of the King of Sardinia. Only very few pieces are around, were around, I must say, until now, because I've just been yesterday with, with Christie's, where they have now the teapot and the slope bowl and uh, several cups and saucers of that service. And you see much better now because this is for sure, it's 1725 uh, for documents and uh, the King of Savoy was good friend with Augustus so Strong, so he got um, uh, that service and uh, it's, it's uh, documented that it was painted by Herold himself. So these pieces will come up in the 2nd of, or 3rd of July uh, here. One other uh, example, wonderful example, uh, pa the painting is after an uh, engraving of um, Petrus Schenk, for example. This is rather well copied, and obviously the, the ladies were too small, so he arranged them in a different way. And I like also very much the, this chamber pot with very delicate scenes painted on it. You have here men who, who smoke cigarettes or, or pipes, actually, and the ladies, one has to go to the loo, obviously, and is only halfway uh, dressed anymore, and the other one is bringing her a, a chamber pot that she will use very nice, and the, ba the baby is also made, would have needed the chamber pot. And on the other side, you again, you see the lady rather uh, not, not much dressed and a bed, so you can imagine what happens afterwards. Otherwise, there are wonderful other pieces where, uh, or, or key pieces, I want to say. The la this lady, she has on her um, uh, uh, chair the initials of one uh, painter, Philip Ernst Schindler, P-A-E-S, and uh, typical for him are these noses, rather round and, and uh, with this, this um, we can attribute other pieces to Schindler. Then we have wonderful pieces uh, that we can attribute to Stadler and also to Löwenfink. Um, some others attributed to Löwenfink. And we had in Lustheim also one wonderful vase to attribute to Löwenfink, but it's not there anymore more because now all these three vases had we have given them back to Dresden. In Dresden, they had uh, in, during the World War II, they made photos in I think 1941 of all the pieces, and then they were packed and uh, um, hidden some in some places in Saxony. And uh, before they were uh, returned after the, the war, uh, quite some was uh, pieces were stolen, and these were amongst them. And Schneider bought them, of course he did not know, but nowadays with these photos and so on, and then um, of course it's a pity with this wonderful vase of the dragon, but it's uh, uh, recorded and, and it's good that it's in best back in Dresden. Uh, with this uh, yellow vase, it's very interesting because when we imported it, uh, uh, transported it to Munich, in Munich we have another almost identical vase of this, part of this set, how it's exposed now in our uh, new uh, installed gallery, and the main vase, it, we, have, we put them, the two, the one of Lustheim and the other one of uh, which remained in Munich together, and you see it's exactly the same, and that's how Löwenfink worked. He worked on, it, it's much more economically uh, that, that you work on two pieces together, and if you turn the va vases around, you realize that exactly the same decoration. That's how he did, he worked. Then there are also European scenes, many wonderful pieces with um, Watteau scenes, for example. And um, I want to mention that uh, last year a book was, uh, a two-volume book was uh, published by Claudia Bodinek. 
uh, and she has um, written that raffiness im accord. It's the um, the engravings. Um, the base was the engravings, uh, which are still in the Meissen manufactory. And she was uh, seeking for porcelains and finding uh, the matching pieces. A large, uh, big uh, volume. And she has also been in the uh, engraving um, stamp cabinet or in Dresden and and many many other places and all over also. Uh, with porcelain collections, and she has found the engravings for many of the European scenes. Oops. Uh, like, for example, this ewer with the coat of arms of Spain, Spain. And you see here the gentleman playing the guitar in front of the ladies. It's only that, uh, as often, and you can f uh, find this in the book uh, all over how the porcelain painter changed that, uh, that he, he didn't have the gap in between, so he is almost uh, hitting her with, with uh, her, his uh, uh, guitar. But of course, nevertheless, very interesting. And you, in that book, you can also see how one uh, the, these engravings were used for many different blades because we have so much in this time, uh, the colored and the uh, here with the green uh, bateau service. So that is rather interesting. And also how of one engraving you would finish, how you, he would choose only one person out of one engraving. And also uh, of this snuff box or other uh, wonderful pieces I want to mention. There are also services um, with coat of arms and two huge vitrines with the court of uh, with the service of Sulkowski were with uh, four chandeliers and uh, we bought and very important also the Turin which was copied after the silver of Augustus Strong which was ported to, uh, transported to Meissen to be copied exactly and also the um, centerpiece, uh, the lemon basket, which was exactly copying the centerpiece of the, the silver gilt service. We bought it uh, recently, eight years ago or something, but we can't expose it in this time as it's a close collection and um, we have it now in, in the Bavaria National Museum. But in this time there is a wonderful other centerpiece of, uh, done for uh, Count Brühl with these Chinese figures here around on a, this huge base and it's very it, it's Count Brühl we have also two uh, uh, vitrines with a Schwann service and it's interesting that there is not only our huge centerpiece there is another one a little smaller one so you would imagine Count Brühl probably had these centerpieces like this, that the middle one is the biggest one, and then you have two smaller ones on the each uh, side in the middle of the huge table. Mm -hmm. But if you will really look closer, we realize that the one in Chicago, the one also with the base, the smaller one, it has mounts, wonderful mounts, which cover, the, of course, such a huge piece, you couldn't fire it in one uh, um, part. You have to have uh, parts, uh, partiments, and to cover the gap in between, you have the mounts, wonderful. In Dresden, you can see it. In Lust time, the same problem is there, but even much bigger. The gap doesn't really, the pieces they do not fit together, and even with mounts like this, which where you need the holes for, it wouldn't really work. And you realize if you look inside that the, the piece in Lustheim is really the very early one where they had to sew out after the firing, sew out the inner wall because otherwise it wouldn't even fit together at all. The other one, but what is, if you look closer, the decoration is different. So is that all of Brühl? Hmm, we don't really know. Actually, this decoration with the flowers is more the service of Count Holm. And this decoration, we have court of arms service uh, of Count Hennecke. Ha, would Brühl accept that these others who are lower in rank than him uh, would have his wonderful centerpiece? 
interesting is that we have the same amounts that we have on that table. We have also on that wonderful chandelier. We are two, have two chandeliers with these uh, elephants. And here we have the, the arms um, with a dragon um, for, for holding the uh, candles. And exactly the same mounts are here. And not only exactly the mounts, also the uh, decoration is exactly the same, how you would expe expect it for uh, uh, fitting uh, objects. So probably these were really on a table together, but we don't know wh whether the one in this time really, what, what, I have not found it out yet. At the end, I just want to mention that there are also wonderful animals like these continents um, as well, and birds in this time, and a monkey band and also dogs, and this I'm, I'm now working on as well because we make in the Bavaria National Museum an uh, exhibition in November about dogs, and with porcelain dogs and the, history, the relation to the mankind, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, especially with the pucks, uh, with the order of the pucks, it's a very important part of the exhibition, but also other uh, examples. So I hope you come back Come to perhaps to Munich to uh, see us. With the